Transition Awareness Breathing. Feeling grounded for both children and parents is essential for healthy living and learning. Join Earth Apollo on this series for tips and tools for creating a harmonious environment for learning. Transition Awareness Breathing will help you and your child find an individualized path to tackle change, promote lifelong learning, and discover new approaches to calmness. Okay, so you have a big project and you're so busy. Oh, just with life. You have to make time to get this project. It's a major project that involves drafting a big plan. Where do you start? You start writing. You have all kinds of ideas just sparkling in your mind. And it just seems that the time is just rushing by. And with each moment of time, new ideas keep sparking in your mind. A spark here, a spark there. And you're just so excited. I'm excited. Welcome to Transition Awareness Breathing Podcast. This is Eartha. I would like to thank you for taking time and joining me in another series in Transition Awareness Breathing Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about a familiar term that you have used and heard of in a total different part of your life, English or anything. We're going to talk about editing and we're going to talk about judging. So what does one have to do with the other? And that's what we're going to talk about. But before we get started, I'd like to take a moment and thank Web Talk Radio for allowing me to have a platform to bring Transition Awareness Breathing Podcast to you. And I'd like to thank my producers, Mary Lou and Sam, for making Transition Awareness Breathing Podcast available to you wherever you're at, in your home, in your car, when you're walking. Let's get started. So, like I was saying, it's a big project. And like a lot of projects that begin when we are so excited, oftentimes we have so many ideas and we're jotting things down. And so if you recall, I don't know where you learned the skill, but have you heard of the skill brainstorming? Have you ever attended a session and there was a facilitator there? And do you remember the job of the facilitator? The facilitator is the one that kind of helps everyone participate, get ideas from the mind to the mouth. They help move the group through different stages of forming and storming and norming because sometimes those stages, if the group is not led by a skilled facilitator, sometimes those group dynamics can kind of get in the way of cultivating creative thoughts. Have you thought about that? And you know, the facilitator is a neutral person, and yet at the same time, they're an exciting type of personality. I mean, it just seems like they can look at things from that high level of vision. And as they're doing that, that group is coming together and formulating brilliant ideas and plans that the group never thought they had when they started the session. 
And so the facilitator is invaluable for that group in making the group productive. As a facilitator, one of the roles is to help ideas, no matter how big, no matter how small, to help those ideas get out of the minds of the group. Each group member is important. Can you put a sticky note on that thought? Each member of the group is important. The facilitator may have the group do all kinds of different exercises. And if they're a really great and skilled facilitator, sometimes what you'll hear is just write your ideas down. Write it down. Type it down. Just get it down. Don't worry about spelling. Don't worry about grammar. And you may have even heard of that same type of methodology in, in creative writing or writing period. I've used it. it and you know, it, I have to admit, this is a skill that I really had a hard time learning. And once I learned it, it is so, so great. But I really had to, it was a very steep learning curve. And so and that skill is, is when, when I'm writing a draft of something, and that's another term. Can you put a sticky note on that, on that word draft? When I'm writing a draft, it's the first draft because that first draft is loaded with ideas. I don't want to lose any ideas, so I write it down. And oftentimes, the facilitator is passing out cards or sticky notes, or if you're on your mobile devices, you know, and you're just texting, just get it out. Don't worry about spelling. Don't worry about grammar. Don't organize it. Just get it out. And then, afterwards, then the ideas and thoughts are organized and edited and formatted. But one thing that a facilitator will often say is every person's idea is important and so we're not going to judge anyone's idea. And so who would judge? Who would judge anyone's idea? Well, through nonverbal and verbal types of messages, rolling the eyes, the big sigh. All of a sudden, people have to go to the bathroom and someone is talking. Those kinds of behaviors communicate that someone's idea is not very important. It's a judging. And maybe, no, maybe you disagree. It's okay. But just think about it. To get all the ideas out. And why are we talking about this in transition awareness breathing? What's that have to do with it? Bear with me. We're going to get there. So when we organize our thoughts and edit it and and reformat it, then oftentimes we rewrite the plan in a second draft. And this goes on until it is developing into something that is still not the final draft. And so when we practice awareness, which is a part of mindfulness, we also have to learn the skill of not editing or judging our thoughts. Oftentimes, when we're learning to do the breathing and just concentrate on the breath, breathing in your nose, blowing out your mouth, 
and oftentimes thoughts, distracting thoughts, will purge their way into our minds. And maybe they're not considered distracting thoughts, but the to-do list starts to filter in and a cloud of the daily activity begins to move into the time you have set aside. And all of a sudden you find yourself rushing and breathing is not relaxation breathing, but it's a, okay, is this over with? Okay, let me see. I got five minutes. Okay, this, this is enough. And you're more important than that. Because when you set aside your mindfulness time, it's your time. And so let the thoughts come and let them go. Because that's what thoughts do. Thoughts come in like a cloud and they'll filter out like a cloud. Keeping focus on the breath and the awareness of what that breath is doing for your mind and as you're exhaling and you're just blowing away all the tightness, keep your focus on the breath. And when those thoughts begin to cloud back in and fly back in, don't judge them. Don't edit them. Just let them pass. You're not adopting any of the thoughts. You're not taking any of the thoughts. You're not even going to pay attention to it. And so we're not going to judge the thoughts. We're not going to push it out. We're going to let it go away. And we're not going to judge ourselves. Often a thought might come in as we're doing our mindfulness practice and it may trigger something from years ago Let it go. This is the now, and you're working on the now. So that when you practice your awareness of where you're at right now, everything is regenerating itself, is updating itself. And so you're not allowing those distractors to prevent you from having, um, let me see, a full loaded update of your calmness, of your relaxation, of your awareness, of your appreciation, of your thankfulness. Nothing is going to um, um, dilute the kindness that maybe you experienced and you want to just kind of bask in the sun or the glow, the kindness. Let the judgments, don't edit the thoughts. Just let them pass. I like to think of positive thoughts like like treasures. And so when you take a moment, I mean, you may not have five minutes, but when you take a moment and you practice a mindfulness technique, it could be your the breath, just concentrating on the breath. It could be just sitting quietly and just being aware and thinking of of thoughts of appreciation. And when you're in that that realm of appreciating thoughts and, and kindness, I like to think of those as like as treasures. They're very precious. And you know what happens sometimes when there's a lot of of things that are precious, or sometimes they, there are invaders that try to take those precious moments away. And so when you let the thoughts just pass, you're not paying any attention to those thoughts, you're not going to judge it, you're not going to address it. They're like clouds. You just They just kind of flow by. And We're not going to judge others, right? Okay, so sometimes a thought might come into our mind as as we're taking a quiet moment 
And, you know, we don't want to start um, reminiscing about, well, the reason why I'm like this is because of this or because of that. No, no, let it go. Let it go. Because this is your moment and this is your treasure. Set it aside. Because when you can set it aside, that thought, and let it flow, you have taken yourself up to a higher level. You have gone above the clouds. You're not getting caught in the clouds. Because when you can ascend above the clouds, things are clear. And that's where we're working towards. It takes practice. And so I would encourage you, just a humble suggestion, is just to start off small, a small amount of time. And if you're going to practice the breathing, just practice on the breathing, concentrating on the breath, and being aware of the movements of your body as you're concentrating on the breath the movement of your, your, your tummy, the movement of your chest and your shoulders. Just, just those, just a little, little bit at a time, small steps. And then maybe you want to take the next step and mindfully walking and being aware of the beauty of where you're at. And remember when those Thoughts filter in, go above the clouds, enjoy your treasures because they're your treasures. Concentrate on the treasures and let the clouds pass. And as you're letting those clouds pass, those thoughts, put yourself in the position of the facilitator. You are the facilitator. You're allowing those clouds to pass because as you do, you are allowing the positive thoughts, the positive ideas to grow so that those ideas and those thoughts can come to the mind so that they can come out the mouth. And when the positive thoughts and the creative thoughts get to the level of the mind and the mouth, you can, as the facilitator, take the next step and put the kindness and the creativity into action. And that's where the rejuvenation and the energy comes from. Each thought is important. As a facilitator, we have to recognize when the thoughts are welcome at a particular time. No longer is there chaos now. Now it is organized. Now is the time that you are organizing when, when you're allowing yourself or not allowing yourself to be distracted. And that's what facilitators do. They generate, they facilitate the positive flow of the group. Your thoughts are important. And so there will come a time when you may need to address those thoughts that float by, but it's not right now. And you may need maybe some help to address those clouds that flew by. And that's great. That's, that's so important. But as you do your mindfulness, let the positive flow. Just fill your mind and your heart and enjoy and appreciate your treasures. Thank you for joining me in Transition Awareness Breathing Podcast. I look forward to talking to you next time. Have a great day. 
Be sure and pick up a copy of Eartha's new book, Tab Mindfulness, Awareness and Coloring Activities in a Pandemic World. It's not just an ordinary coloring book. It features 23 illustrations to stimulate thought, relaxation, and creativity for anyone between the ages of 4 and 94. Increase your positive self-talk energy. Unlock new creative paths. Transform your time once or twice a week to create beautiful art while strengthening confidence, building positive self-talk, and sensitize self-awareness. Tab Mindfulness, awareness and coloring activities in a pandemic world. It's available now at Amazon.com. <music> 